Marie Kondo. That's it. Yeah, she even has a shit jaw. No. She's yeah, of course she does. No. She's she like, doesn't. oh, these Allen keys do not spark joy. I have <laughs> so much IKEA furniture I need to rebuild. That's the intro. Hello, I'm Ben, and welcome to Quarter Life Quandary Podcast. We'll be chatting about life, relationships, events, experiences, and anything in between. Joined with Katie in this, our Quarter Life Quandary. Hello. Hello. How are you? Very well. How are you? Uh, you know, bobbing along. <laughs> I don't know why that tickled me. I don't think I've heard anyone heard. I don't. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say "bobbing along" to describe their. Uh, State oh, that's, of I don't know. that's just how it feels sometimes. It felt like a very old person thing to do. <sighs> yeah, it feels like something my mum would have said. Just bobbing along. Bed knobs and broomsticks. Oh, God. <laughs> just ageing yourself horribly. Yeah. I was grateful. I don't give a shit. So, I want to get the most important thing out of the way. All I right. know. I, I, come on. Wheels or doors? Wheels. Fucking yes. 100. That, I'm worried about door people. I'm worried See, about I, door people. I think they're just the people that like an argument. Yeah, they're the people that, just despite knowing the answer, just, just want to be... They just want, they, they want an argument. My remember, best argument for yeah. it is Hot Wheels and Lego. Mine is warehouses. With the... Fucking wheel floors. Yep. Or yes. you've got milk crates, you've got trolleys, you've got all the plant, you've got pallet trucks, you've got conveyor belts. If you look at cars, three door cars and five door cars exist. Mm. So there is a like I don't know in this case would a would a well, boot count as a door? Yes. But there's also there's also a spare wheel. Cars basically cancel themselves out. Yeah. So you've either got a five door five wheel car or a three wheel five three door five wheel car. Mm, they kind of yeah, but then the only thing that was concerning me is there's there's quite a lot of doors. There's quite a lot of openings that I wouldn't consider a door. But what are you defining a wheel as? Well, something that spins around a central axis. So then we have gears. Well, this is the problem, you know, but you also have loft hatches, you have doors and panels, you have doors and fridges. There's, you know, there's always, there's the good saying of every window is a door. But then would you also count like washing machines and tumble dryers as wheels? Yeah. So, well, you can also count washing machines and tumble dryers to have a door. Mm. I think Hot Wheels, warehouses, Legos and gears have have it sold for me. I, I think so too. But I, I'm just slightly aware that it really depends on your definition of doors and wheels. Does a door have to be on a hinge? Hmm. Because I've seen some people arguing like that valves in the body are counting as doors. Yeah, but then you could say like loft hatches as well. You've got yeah, there's there's so I many loft hatches with hinges often though. I've got mine has. Mine is just a bit of wood that rests on top of a thing like a smaller than itself hole. Mm, a frame. Yeah. That's tanks. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Um but yeah, like to be know. fair, doing a quick count in my room that I'm in right now. One, two, three, four, five doors that I can Oh fuck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, eight technical doors, I guess, because I've got cupboards and things. But there's also one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen wheels. Because my desk has wheels, my portable radiator, because my other radiator is beyond fucked, has wheels. My bed has wheels. Oh, there's a suitcase, two extra wheels. 
Oh, but the suitcase has a zip. The the definition of a door is a hinge, sliding, or revolving barrier at the entrance of a building, car, room, or vehicle, or in the framework of a door of a cupboard. Does a revolving door count as four doors? Well, this is it. Technically. It's like the, the room I'm in. It just the more the more I think about it, the more I'm just questioning what you would define as a will. I've got would my tape. laptop count as a door? Well, it's a door into the internet. But it, it it's hinged and it opens and gives me access to the keys. Exactly. Oh, a will is defined as a circular object. The result revolves on an axle and is fixed below a body of a vehicle or an object to enable it to move easily over ground. So the overground bit really does limit the, what you can consider a will. So that runs, that gets rid of the gear aspect. But where is that definition from? Uh, I just typed in a Google from the Oxford Language Dictionary. Hmm. Ah, but there is more than one definition. Oh, the bird. second definition is a machine or structure having a wheel as its essential part. Hmm. I don't know. It's, it's very convoluted. Yeah, so we've also got the definition being a circular frame or disc arranged to revolve on an axis as on or in vehicles or machinery. Um, any machine, apparatus, instrument, etc. shaped like this or having a circular frame, disc or revolving drum as an essential feature, a potter's wheel, roulette wheel, spinning wheel, etc. I didn't even think of a roulette wheel. No. I think you have to kind of go with, if you was to look at something and say, that is a wheel, or that is a door. Oh, shit. Than muddying it. Advent calendars. Yeah. But Hot Wheels, no, I'm sticking my Hot Wheels on Lego. I'm, I'm still going by the, the amount of wheels I see in warehouses is insane. Yeah. Almost every table has four wheels on it. What's those kind of warehouses, though, that literally have just the floor made out of wheels that are themselves on a spinning wheel? They're normally cargo, but technically they're ball bearings. But the wheels aren't. The the ones you're thinking of where the floor is is like a a roller floor. No, I'm not. I'm going to try and find a picture of what I'm thinking of. Um, because it's not ball bearings. Okay, I'll take your word for it. Yeah. But did you see? I I stuck it on someone's Facebook. But have you seen the conveyor trolley, which is total just made of wheels? Yeah, that's basically what this floor was. Yeah, a flexible outfeed conveyor, and I, I couldn't even possibly begin to count this picture. Yeah. There's easily five. It's five on the line. It's got to be forty lines there. So you know, you're at two hundred, and there's I've seen thousands of these in warehouses. Crazy. This is. It is related because it's what I'm doing right now. But um, I'm trying to find a video on TikTok that I saw a couple of days ago. Um, there's a feature now that you can find it. If you search like a keyword from the video and then next to the search bar, there's like two lines with circles on them. I didn't know that. Yeah. You click on the two lines with circles like bit and then under activity, it's got watched videos within the last seven days and it will just search through things that you've seen. Like if TikTok instantly refreshes itself, I don't. I don't need to. I. I spend too much time on there. I don't need to be going back to shit I've already watched. If you want to reference it, I know, but it's a helpful hack. Although I'm never finding this floor made of wheels. I'm trying to. I'm trying to find. It's been fucking. What's it? Can't think of the word. I'm trying to find an answer, but I've just been sent down a fucking wild goose chase on a website. 
been clickbaited. Mm. Like the doors and wheels debate has been cl concluded. Apparently, 56% 50, of the world, uh, sorry, 56% of the people have come to the conclusion. And what is it? I forgot steering wheels in cars as well. Mm -hmm. But bonnets. Yeah, and boots. Do boots count? I would say they do. I would also say they do. I just didn't want them to. I still think it's wheels. And yeah. the twin What I'm poles. trying to describe was like, this whole floor was made out of like, so there was like floor textured moving discs, like flush with the floor. And then like just normal wheels sticking out of them that you'd see on the bottom of a desk or something. I think it was literally just to push boxes across in a warehouse. I I know what you're talking about. I have seen them before. But I always assumed that they were ball bearings. But no, you could physically see like, you know, like the angled bit of metal that holds the wheel in place on a desk. Oh, okay. It had those physically sticking out of it. Let's have a look. That's another thing I didn't think about. You know them little rolling tools you got for like uh, flattening out the lawn or like rolling on newspaper or the yeah. ab roller. Fucking hell, there's so many wheels. Wait, did you just say that something had been scientifically proven? Are you on the same goddamn thing I'm on? Probably. I was, I was literally spending ages trying to like read through it, and it was just... I don't know how they've got the word scientific when it's just people from TikTok giving yeah. their opinions on stuff. I found what you were talking about, by the way. Oh, what, the wheel floor? Yeah. Yeah. They're called roller beds. Oh. And the ones that you're looking, you're thinking of, they're one direction roller beds. The one I'm thinking of is a multi direction. Yeah. Well, I think these ones had the potential to go multi direction because, like I say, that disc like, that was flush with the floor changed direction. They're just probably not as smooth. But then would ball bearings in that sort of setting count? I, I would say no. Hmm. I mean, if you start including balls in this. True, yeah. So the, ne the next question, is there more balls or more wheels? <laughs> balls or walls? Okay, apparently the luggage market is worth $20 billion per year globally. Are we, are we really going to go, we're going to try and prove this ourselves? Oh yeah, you're thinking of that's what you're thinking of, not what I'm thinking of, right? No, I've sent you yeah, that's what I was thinking of. The ball yeah. bearings in the floor. Yeah. But then I've I've seen sort of similar ones you've said. They're more like a wheel. Yeah, like the one loaded. that I'm thinking of looks like your one, the top yeah. one, but with like an office chair or like desk mm. wheel like protruding out of it. Yeah, I I have seen them before. Buggies. Buggies account for a lot of wheels. I forgot steering wheels in cars. But the thing is, the whole... I think if you just forget the cars, you've also got things like scissor lifts. Shopping lifts, trolleys. Fork lifts. You've got pump trucks. There's, it's just, just in a warehouse setting, there is all these wheels with no doors. But even in like the vehicle world, how often... What's, what's the most annoying thing on the road? Motorbikes. And bikes. Mm. In general. All yeah, wheels, no doors. Scooters. Yeah. Like little kid scooters. Rollerblades. Yeah. 18-wheeler HGVs. Mm. Buses. It's only got one door. 
Yeah. Do we count hinged windows on buses? I mean, you can you can count the escape door on the back at the top. And I will. You got trains. Did you uh, still think you put your phone on silent, huh? Uh, I did. And I th- well, hold on. It, why is it still chiming? <laughs> so annoying. We need to have a ring and not notifications. <clears throat> Just team doors has some explaining to do because they they seem. I'm scared of them. They're so I'm, confident. I'm not scared. Wrong. I think they just. This is. This was back in year four, and we were doing a science experiment. And someone, she was like, "What happens when I throw the stone into this body of water?" And everyone says it sinks. And there was one kid who went, "It will float." And a teacher was like, looked at him and went, "Well, that's a very good job that you're you're you know you're not going with the uh, the majority." And then it sunk right to the floor, and she was like, "But you're wrong." <laughs> and then at the time, I was like. Why would I was just? Why do you congratulate him for being? Yeah, that's what I mean. I was looking at her for for ages, just thinking, "You've totally like fucked with my sense of, like, am I just meant to give the wrong answer to to be different?" Yeah, I was like, "That's stupid. You're a stupid woman." <laughs> I bet she made me so good. angry, and only at just th- this moment did I did I kind of consider that he might have not, you know, she might have been doing it to like soften the blow. <laughs> I'd like to think so. But at the Literally, same time, all this time I've just, well, I've just I haven't thought about it that much. But at the same time, a participation trophy never made someone an athlete. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <sighs> like you need to know you're wrong. You need to bask in being wrong so that you can get better at being right. So I've since this whole. So I'm going to move away from wheels and doors because okay. uh, I think. It's a I very think, annoying argument. I'm actually I'm, I'm sick to my teeth with it. I know. I, it was just I wanted to bring it up last week when we had planned to do it, but it was just. Oh, I'm not even uh, like. Did you see that fucking James Corden even did this on TV? I don't. I don't follow the news. I don't follow TV anymore. I saw it on TikTok, but it's got out of control. It's on chat shows. That just means we're really late on the the game now. Oh no! So I've been thinking about this for some time, and I'm, I'm I hated it from the start. I, I don't know why, because like it reminded me of that question that you always just see pop up on Reddit of just how many things are there? Like how many things are there? It's it's, in, in, it's infinity. But there, there's got to be a number of things. That's the beauty of maths. The maths. The, there isn't an end number with these sorts of things. It's like, how many stars are there? How many grains of sand are there? But do the stars count as things? Yes. That's what I mean. There are so many things. Start getting into, you know, atom levels. How many atoms are there in everything? But would the atoms of a thing count as things, or would the thing itself count as a thing? Well, what makes an atom? Do you, you're going to start counting electrons? Where, where, how? What do you, you know, you need the parameters... This is Which why, is why this the... annoys me because I deep dive. <laughs> this is the problem with like the wheels and doors is yeah. you haven't set the parameters of what you're trying to quantify. So you just go by you you know it's the but it's the uh, oh what's the fucking word for it? Um, I can't remember what the fucking word is. One thing I've got, you're clutching at straws, going, "This is a wheel. This is a door." No, you know where it's the theory of mind. It's one of the theories of minds where, you know, what you think you know is a given that everyone should know. You find well, out. Well, you I find it out when you start around. talking to people, and then you you just kind of like, oh well, you know about you know the problems that we're having here in the world with the economics, and people just look at you like with mouth opened. And you're like, oh, yeah. you know. I always, I, I, I'm bad for that, assuming that the things that I think are common sense is what everyone considers to be common sense. Yeah, that's that's a, it's, it's a fundamental theory of mind problem. Yeah. You know, every, you seem to think that everyone has a baseline knowledge. It's only when you go talking to people that you realise. I always phrase it when it comes down to like politics or just any kind of like 
moral compass kind of question of I don't understand why people don't understand what I understand. Well, that's there's a whole other aspect to that, isn't there, where, you know, have they had the same life experiences? Were they taught differently? You know, some people just n- are never going to grasp yeah, but you have certain to really, aspects. You have to really sit back and realise why you think that way because you just sit there going, it's so obvious that this is the answer, this is the right way to do it. Why doesn't anyone else understand that? Like, I know. this is quite clearly a shitty thing. Why does no one else see this as a shitty thing? Oh, yeah, because they haven't been researching for four hours why it's a shitty thing. I just... Ignorance is bliss. And I wish I had it. And I, I do feel that people who are blissfully unaware tend to go on being blissfully unaware. Do you reckon it's a choice? Uh, I feel like it's self-serving. It's like a self-affirming sort of problem, you know, where if you're that happy, you tend not to let other things bother you to the point where you won't go and check it out. You're not going to go and fact search. You're going to be, you know, it's kind of like how the media gets into people's heads because, you know, you're going to read some screen grabbed bit off of Facebook, like the bit we were talking about before where, you know, someone's knocked up a fake Steven Seagal picture of, and he said he's gone to fight with the Russians. Yeah. You know, someone's going to see that and they're going to, you know, stick it on Facebook okay. and everyone's going to fucking go mental for it and not actually do the fact checks of it. It's absurd. I, yeah, and it must be so peaceful. But this this the thing. It's just kind of like, <laughs> yeah, it, it must be, but... I, I know imagine, that I couldn't live like that. I can't imagine sitting there not wanting to understand how everything fits together. Yeah. I was um, driving down the road the other day and um, I think had a passenger and sort of stopped the car because it was quite airy. It was, it, was, it was reasonably quiet. Oh, well, so I just pulled over on the side because there was a bird of prey sitting on the branch directly over the car, like really low down. Like not flying, just chilling on a branch. And it was it was gorgeous. And he was like, is that a hawk? And I was like, um, let's get a bit closer. Pulled up underneath it and went, oh, it's got a fanned out tail and it's mostly brown. It's a kestrel. And he was like, what? I was like, yeah, we only really have two main birds of prey in this country, kestrels and red kites, and it doesn't have the white patches under its wings and it doesn't have a forked tail. So it's more likely than not a kestrel. And he was like, why do you just know things? I was like, because I have unrestricted internet access and I'm obsessive. I'm, yeah, I'm doing... Not to be trusted. I'm listening to a lot of history. So I'm, I'm trying to go through the British History podcast, which I highly rate. But I'm only on episode 129. And I think he's at something like 400 at the moment. But yeah. I'm currently in the Saxon era. And it's the same thing. I'm, like, I'm up on a lifter listening to, you know, doing my electrician's work, listening to, you know... Just imagine if you were to bring someone from the past to, to today and show them everything that we've got. I constantly think about this, but in like a movie format. Like, I don't know why there isn't just like a TV show or episode. And if there is, uh, or film, sorry. And if there is, please tell me, because I just want to see someone just trying to catch up with where we are at. Like, I want someone that doesn't even know electricity exists to come and see someone taking a picture of a fucking... Isn't, isn't this Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? Hmm? Isn't it Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? No, that's not as satisfying as I want it to be. Uh. I want someone from, like, an Anglo-Saxon <clears throat> dude to see someone taking a picture of her fucking soup in an overpriced restaurant with a magic witch box and get overwhelmed. I want to see it. I want to see a lot of it. Do you think it's weird that our generation was one of the last to uh, spend our playtime outside? I do. Very briefly, though, can I just go back to the whole movie idea? Sorry. I want to see someone like take today money and go back with the value of it to the past. Like, I want to see someone like capable of time travel taking their bank account with like three grand of savings in it and going back and buying like a 200 pound car and being like minted 
Oh, so you're talking about in like 30 years ago, four years ago? Yeah. Yeah. I want someone to go back with like, say they've got like mortgage savings of near on near, nearing 30 grand or something. I just want to go back and be like, oh my God, the quality of life I'm going to have is astounding. <laughs> Wait, sorry. Do kids not play outside anymore? No. They do. I've seen them. Because I, seen, I keep I nearly hitting them with my car. Outside. I keep nearly hitting them with my car. Are you talking about teenagers? No, I'm talking about like nine-year-olds. Oh. My nine-year-old never goes outside. Your nine-year-old's cool, though, to be fair. Um, I, yeah, there are like, I'd say about five children that regularly play out, regularly play out on my street. They're mostly I mean, riding bikes or walking the dog, but I've seen them like sitting at the bottom of the cul-de-sac playing with sticks and stuff like I used to. I mean, that's quite nice. Mm. Maybe maybe when it's get hotter, the kids will actually venture outside again. I hope they don't because they're everywhere. I was driving through Asda because uh, it's a free for all. I'm learning. No one cares where they're walking in the road, but I had like two kids on skateboards behind me on the main road, and they would just they ended up skateboarding parallel to me on the right hand side. Nice. I've never been more nervous about killing a teenage boy in my life. Yeah, and the emphasis is all on you now as well. Since I had to turn right to leave, and they were on my right-hand side. Just roll down your window and tell them to fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's difficult. You'll get used to it. You'll, you'll become more confident in it, trust mm. me. I think we were a weird generation for like playing outside and stuff. Because we went from literally like one day playing outside to like maybe a year later necking vodka and mad dog in a park like still being children yeah i, I kind of remember it it's, it's weird it was still kind of like taking my bike out to go hang out with people and then i stopped taking the bike because it was getting too hard to cycle home drunk or high. yeah but we were definitely a streetlight generation but also a dial-up internet generation like, I think I distinctly remember the point in my childhood where staying out, I'd stay out until it got dark and then I'd come in and go on MSN and then I'd gradually just go out less and less and be on MSN more and more. So it was always like Monday to Friday, well, Monday to Thursday evening on online and then Friday night, Saturday, I was out and then Sunday I'd be online. Yeah. And then I was I was quite I, the old like was a teenager I was allowed to stay up till I wanted so I'd spend all night online. I was playing the biggest game of Risk in my family home because we had the the family desktop, which I can only describe as what people in the seventies thought the future would look like. It was like a bubble PC. Oh, did you have like the original Apple kind of looking one? Yeah, it was like. Almost a uh, like translucent plastic case around a big bubble with like two bubble speakers attached to the side of the monitor. Like it was a horrific looking thing. But um, I would be on this family PC at like 8 pm while my mum was watching Cory trying to not let my mum and dad see me getting absolutely fucking groomed on Habbo Hotel. I didn't think Habbo was that bad. Oh, it was full of nonces. Oh, yeah. So bad. You want to hobble? <laughs> oh god, I was sitting there as an adult with a friend, and I was like, "Should we go back on Habbo just to see what it's like?" So we went on and went. Wait, are we the pedophiles now? Yes. And we we went on there and we found like a twenty five plus room on there, and it was literally everyone just sitting and going. Do you remember the lighter? <laughs> do, do you remember the pool being closed because there was a protest? We're so old, and everyone was just going. Oh, my, my kid needs a feed. Sorry, I'll be back. <laughs> and it was just a load, a load of old sods, just like trying Reminiscing. to, yeah, like claw back their youth via Habbo. Nostalgia. It was art. It was artwork. I can't believe they reset everything. Yeah, I've lost, I've lost all my fernie. I was gutted. I had like so much Habbo Club furniture. 
And I realised I was old when I heard a group of people in the pub reminiscing on Club Penguin. Yeah. I was I was too old for Club Penguin. Same. And I, people were getting nostalgic for things after my time, and it hurt a lot. Yeah, this, I'm starting to see it now, like, on Instagram. It's like, ah, oh, do you want nostalgia? And it will show, like, a, a video of, like, I don't know, some fucking CBBS thing that I've never even seen or heard of. And I was like, okay, no, I'm old. Yeah. Got People t- having nostalgia for things I don't even, that come after me. Some fucking scrotum with facial hair in Superdrug yesterday um, was like, We've got this on sale. We've got this on sale. I was like, if I buy it, will you stop trying to sell me things? And he was like, yes, it's 79p. Take this bad shower gel. I was like, fine. He was like, do you have your card, like your points card? I was like, no, not with me, which was my mistake. Because he was like, well, if you give me your email address, I can look it up and put the points on there. I was like, fine. It's blah, blah, blah at msn.com because I'm old. He was like, it's fine. We still have a button for AOL both of which are are long after my time. I was born in 2005. I was like, excuse me, what? He's like, yeah, I'm 17. I'm like, oh, God. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) Oh, my God. That's disgusting. I have, I'm pretty sure I have shoes older than him. That is literally about the sort of time my feet stopped growing, so I probably probably could find shoes that old. Yeah. Ugh, it's a horrible world. I definitely have, like, bags older than him. And, like, when I was in the pub and a friend's relative was there from, like, hours away where she lives and was drinking in the pub an alcoholic beverage and just off the cuff casually says, I was born after 9-11. Like, wait, what? Go go back to school. It, go to bed. I don't like it because now I'm the people I hated when I was like 16, 17. Like, oh, being old's not like cool. Stop trying to hang that over me. I'm not. I'm just trying to comprehend it. Yeah, I always think of it when I go to gigs and I stand at the back. I'm like, ah, oh, stand at the back with the adults where some of the young kids not going to stand on me. Honestly, at festivals, I remember so fondly trying to get to the front. I actually have, from Download Festival 2014, I have an x-ray with Download 2014 written on it because I got myself fucked up at the front row of the headliner. And I was like, I came back like, I had the best weekend. It was so fun. I got this souvenir. And now not only am I standing at the back, sometimes I'll bring in a chair. I haven't brought a chair yet. I have bought a camping chair into Download Festival Mm. on the Sunday because I've packed up my tent, ready to leave. Because we're going to leave on the Sunday night. Ugh. And all I've left out is my camping chair so I can sit on the hill, watch begrudgingly Guns N' Roses, and then just drive home. It's lovely. Yeah, I haven't got to that point yet. Ugh. I mean, it was sad when we, we did Reading Festival last year mm. and I walked around on the Sunday night thinking it was going to be mayhem and I was going to bump into loads of really cool, like edgy kids and you know, do a lot of drinking and partaking and other things. Everyone was asleep. It's their bedtime because they're 15. <sighs> it was horrible. I remember being there and it was fucking carnage at like two in the morning. Oh, yeah. No, the no. whole sleep with one eye open on the Sunday thing just doesn't seem to ring true anymore. No. And if Literally, anything does happen, it's like a camp, a camping chair in a fire making a bang because the poles got hot. There wasn't even that. Yeah. It was literally there was literally like one little campfire. And was there like, is in orange. Orange and yellow seem to explode more often than not. Mm. But um no, I uh walking around festivals is eye opening. It's even worse. Feeling like a pervert. Right? Yeah. What direction do you look in? Like, hello, fellow children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I much prefer it when I've got hives on. Yeah. Just give me a wide berth then. 
I will never get over um, working with one of my friends at a different festival. And we were wearing the big, big, like, bomber jackets that say eviction across the back. Like, not even, like, the company name, just the big word in capitals, eviction. And we had our backs to these children. And they were, because we were, like, pitched next to the first aid tent. Uh, so they came up because they were waiting for their friend who had taken way too many pills and came up and like, do you want a pill? And we very slowly turned around like, no, we don't want a pill. And I'll, I'll go on it. We laugh. And then we turned back around to show them the jackets that they were staring at. And they were like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Please don't kick us out. Please don't kick us out. We're not going to just just read the room, babe. Just fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm not here to kick you out. I'm here to, I don't know, listen to some music and get 60 quid. <laughs> yeah. But what, what threw me off at festivals is that kids don't smoke anymore. No, it doesn't surprise me anymore. They just do cat <laughs> Too much. That must be it as well with the whole Sunday night thing. All of them have just had too much ketamine. Yeah. They're just zonked. I don't understand how these kids are like waking up after the bank holiday and just functioning after like a five day drug binge. But in the same way that we all did. How do they have any serotonin? They're a depressed generation anyway. You don't, but you need to go home. <laughs> <laughs> life, life marches on. That's another thing. The hangovers have started. What I thought was a hangover when I was like 21 does not even come close to what a hangover is. Oh, they only get worse. Oh, God. Like, I was just feeling a little bit shitty and needed some carbs when I was 21. Now I need, like, an IV. I know. My missus and her cousin went out on uh, Saturday and they were were all the way up till... 10 o'clock yesterday night they were suffering I am slightly glad I went home (laughs) I was supposed to be there I think yeah I think you were invited yeah yeah I think that yeah I was just working out what happened on Friday and what happened on Saturday and which event was which I don't know it's all blurring into one to me like, how was it already March? I don't know. Where's the last two years gone? This is I insane. Know. I keep thinking the pandemic started in 2020, and it it just it didn't really, did it? It was it was kicking off in November 2019. Yeah, kind of. I mean, it's just it's just mental to me because I keep thinking it was last year. Yeah. But no, it's just a long time ago. It's been two whole years. Since we were isolated. And it's all just normal again. I have so many events. Why do I keep saying yes to doing things? Because the idea of doing things is nice. It seems great until I actually have to do the thing. Yeah, but then are you you fully accepting in not doing anything at all. How do you mean? Like, if you don't say yes to things, are you going to be able to pick and choose which ones are good that you do want to do, or are you just going to say no to everything? Are you going to become a homebody? I feel like there isn't a middle ground. Well, this is the problem. You I know, feel I've... like you say yes to everything or don't get asked to do anything. Yeah, basically. That's that's the that's the ultimate problem you have when you have kids because people ask you and you say no because you can't get the childcare and people just stop asking you and then people yeah. you think are like your mates like suddenly aren't your mates anymore, which is sad. It is a little bit, but you you know you, you get over it. I used to hate going on Instagram because I'd be looking at them and thinking, oh, I should be out there, I should be doing that, and I just don't care anymore. No, I tend not to go out so much anymore anyway. Like, I, I go to events. But it just seems that the older we get, 
and the less money we have, the more people want to do expensive things. I went well, out is... for my birthday, like, on the 26th of February, and it was fucking axe throwing, and the whole day was, like, 50 quid for someone's birthday. Like, I just... You better not expect a birthday drink out of me because I'm broke. But this is the thing. Because you're older, people are expecting you have a bit more disposable income. Gone gone are the days where we just go sit in a field. Hmm. Because the problem is if you do that, people just won't come because they'll be like, I can sit in a field whenever. Yeah, and I mean, axe throwing was good, but getting transport to there was 20 quid in itself. Hmm. Oh, it's pain in the I hole. don't know. It's difficult. Like, I definitely don't have the FOMO anymore. No, no, no. But like, that's completely gone, which is great because. No and I'd get it horrible. bad. I would really get it bad if I wasn't out Friday and Saturday. I was absolutely going to miss something vital to my existence. Well, this is it. <laughs> like, when you've been going out for like 10 years, you're just like, oh, it's just the same drama. Yeah. It's different places. And I, I don't care about them anymore. I was literally having uh, this conversation with a mutual friend of ours. Yeah. And uh, it was exactly that. I was just we were just laughing about how it just never changes. It's still mm-hmm. still the same drama. And I don't understand how they don't realise that. Again, it's some people just live for the drama. Every time I've found myself in any kind of like toxic circle where drama has been the focal point of their existence, I've been like, well, I'm going to fade out that friendship and I am going to not fall out with that person, but I'm definitely going to start doing things that don't actively involve that person as much. Because I, I would yeah. rather not be in the uh, epicenter of bullshit. Well, again, that's what I try to do. Just try not to get involved. Yeah, like the likes of you, our mutual friend, and a few others, um, I know are just pretty chill and just trying to uh, exist. The thing is, is that everyone, everyone lives in their little world, don't they? And then anyone who upsets that is considered drama. Yeah. Look, I, I don't actively hate people who are in drama circles like that, but I just, so do I. just not interested. I just hate it. I hate the dramatics. In t- like, if some people, if you mention their name while they're not present, that's even if it's not inherently negative. Like, I don't think that's slagging someone off. No, I don't. Like, I don't know. My life philosophy has been for the last few years, and it's done me very well is that it's none of my business what anyone else thinks of me. It's my business what I think of others, but it is none of my business what they think of me. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I just I just love I'm st- I still sometimes get messages like oh, people have been people were talking about you doing saying this and saying that. I'm like, I just don't care. No. It's just funny. But the, the amount of Drama it seems to occur, even though I've actively done nothing to receive it, is insane. Oh, it's happened to me as well. I've literally been at the hub of some drama because I started coming out less. Oh yeah, because I mustn't have wanted to hang around with that person because I I would never say yes when they were like, "Are you out?" Like, and I'm just not out. I'm just saving some money and drinking a little bit less because I'm getting fat. Like, it's, strangely, it's not about you. I just love the whole like Facebook events thing at the moment because I went out a little while ago to the pub, and loads of people had said they were going to be there, and all of the people that I know, none of them turned up. I think even you said you were going to be there and you weren't there. I'm trying to think of what the event was. It was uh, someone's birthday party, not like a close friend, but... Oh, I think I know what yeah, you're yeah. talking about. And uh, all these people, I was like, oh, I don't need to ask anyone. They're all going to be there. Was it Was it a man's birthday? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 40th. Yeah, yeah. It was, and it was funny because I just like ended up sitting with like people I normally wouldn't sit with and just having like a chat, so... 
Well, I actually had every intention of going to that one, um, but someone's anxiety, not my own, prevented it. So I stayed in and um, assisted with that. That's cool. It doesn't need an excuse. No, no, no. But I, like, just, I just thought it was funny because I said to like my missus on the way out, I was like, oh, don't worry, there's loads of people going to be out. I got back, I was like, none of them were there. <laughs> no, that wasn't even like an excusing it thing. That's just a highlighting <laughs> where my priorities have changed. Oh, yeah. Which is interesting, because I never thought they would. It's nice, though. It's nice feeling like you've kind of got the ability to not go out. Because, like, like I say, my FOMO used to be intense. Well, it's still a bit, like, it's still a bit of a myth sometimes when you see, like, parties and stuff that you could have been invited to. But it's yeah. Just like, yeah. Well, the worst one, the fucking one that I hate the most, is I'll be out with a load of people and they're like, well, why didn't you come to this party? Well, I wasn't invited. I hate that. And they were like, oh, but it was obvious you could have come. I goes, well, how could I have come if I wasn't aware of it? Oh, did, did so-and-so not invite you? I just no. said that. Like- they're like, oh, well, I thought you were invited. And I was like... It's your party. If you didn't invite me, I'm not just going to show up. Exactly. And they're just like, oh, well, you, you could have come. And I was like, well, it's a bit late. I even had that with someone's wedding. They're like, why didn't you come to my wedding? I was like, you didn't invite me. Literally. Oh, you could have just showed up. I was like, I didn't know where it was. <sighs> How could I just show up? Plus, you just wouldn't do that. But yeah. I don't know. Good oh my goodness me. I thought that was my conscience speaking. It is. <laughs> ben, don't do the thing. You are so loud right now. <clears throat> Sorry, so loud? Good. No. Yeah. Wait. Did you actually mean that, Ben, or was that sarcasm? Because he is not loud. Uh, well, you're very quiet, so I've got my headphones turned all the way up to hear you, and then he's normal. Oh. But yeah, good evening. What have I missed? Everything. Um, Talking about FOMO. We talked about wheels and doors, but we're, we're well past that now. Oh. You you can you can make a comment. Are you are you wheels or doors? I don't know. Uh, um, I I haven't fully looked into this topic, but I think isn't it wheels? Off the top of your dome. What's your instinct? Wheels. What's your instinct? Good. Yeah. You're on the right side. You're on the right side. The right side of time. Yeah, because you can't use a door as a wheel, can you? So. Uh. What? Okay. <laughs> I can't tell if that was a joke or if he has no idea what's happening. What? Let's just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> How was your cat, buddy? What? You can use a you can use a wheel as a door. In fact, all the best mm. places you go into have a wheel like construct as a door. Think about that. I have no idea what you're talking about. I literally do not know what you mean. A submarine hatch. What do you turn to get into it? You're just talking... Okay. Do you know what we're talking about? That Would you not consider that a hatch? Yeah, but what do you have to spin? The door handle. (laughs) Come on, Ben. Say the goddamn word. (laughs) I can't think what the word is. It's a goddamn is. wheel, okay? Maybe. A vault in a bank. Your team but wheels, then, why are you... But then does that not just cancel each other out? Yes. No. But I don't agree with you saying that cars cancel themselves out. But why? A five A five-door car will have six wheels. Okay. What, are you going to count the, the bonnet as well? If you're counting the bonnet and boot, then it's... Um, six to six. No. Because then it's seven to six. 
on a five door. Seven to what? How would you get seven to six? So if you've got a five door, right. I'm chatting shit. I know. I forgot about the bonnets and boots. But three doors don't cancel themselves out, that's for sure. No, but not every car has a spare wheel. They still wouldn't cancel each other out. Yeah. I'm probably going to jinx it, but I don't have a spare wheel. I, I also do not have a spare wheel in my a, last two cars. A three door would be five four. Advent calendars. I that was my one. <laughs> I already mentioned that. I do. I do feel like I, I want to go to team doors just to uh, to fuck with people. Yeah. Aaron, what's your thoughts in 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 general? I, I, what have you got? I as I said, I haven't looked at this topic or what the background of it is at all. The slightest bit. So there's there's no there's no background. Is there more wheels or is there more doors? Uh... Where have you been? The whole world has been losing their shit over this. I mean, I couldn't really give a flying. Tato. No, I mean same, but somehow it's unavoidable. It, it is avoidable because when was the last time you checked whether it was a bone stay or not? I'm not proud to admit that I still look. I never looked in the go. first place. I like the dog. I actually mentioned Ross asked me the other day if it was a bone stay. Because, like, I was having a bad day and he was like, check the bones. <laughs> Your life is just going to be one, like, you're going to wake up in the morning and have to check about, I don't know, 200 different internet meme trends before you're able to function. Oh, us two are lit- literal constant memes. We still, like, quote piggy dip in. Did she tell you the update on Michael Jackson then? <clears throat> Ha! He's, He's still, still dead. dead. He's still dead. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'll it's check. coming up to April, though. April Fool's Day, he lives. That was a strong vape. I have the big lungs. That was a big, deep one. And a big nicotine addiction. Ooh. <coughs> I've had a horrible cough for weeks and everyone looks at me funny when I cough. Me too, and I've taken so many lateral flow tests. Oh, I haven't, I haven't bothered. Oh. I had COVID in February. I've, I've had, had it twice now. Everyone knows you can only uh, get it twice. Before the next variant. I mean, a mutual friend of ours has had it about four times. You're, 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 COVID's not a thing anymore. You must oh, yeah. have read the news. Yeah. True. I keep ordering like lateral flow tests every three days, I think it is, just because they're going to have to, like, they're going to be charged soon, and I know that some bullshit is going to crop up where I'm going to need one. Uh, well, again, it's just going to be, you know, you know, as much as I don't agree with it, the, the way that they're dealing with it now is just to uh, pretend it's not there. Yeah. I mean... What what would be the other way of handling it that would be appropriate? Because the economy and basically everything else that's been fucked up by COVID, I don't think can take any more pressure from lockdowns. Uh, yeah, but the problem is, is you're now moving the problem away from mitigating the risks to people that can't handle it to to the, well to the people that can't handle it really. Rather than everyone taking a bit of responsibility for it, they're just getting rid of it all. So people I feel who like, actually do need to be shielded from it are going to be fucked. I feel like in terms of financial support for furloughing and having sick time off for this, there should still be funding for it, but there should be criteria to meet like there is for a disability living allowance. Uh, I feel like you have to meet a certain amount of criteria in terms of like if you should be shielding or not. Nah. Yeah, but they can't even get they can't even get disability allowance yeah. correct. How can yeah. they mm. how can they be dealing with this as well? <clears throat> it's gonna be another thing that can be easily taken advantage of and the system can be played. So 
It was genuinely. It still ended up helping more people than none. I don't even think that in itself is the biggest issue. If, if you can't even get the disability payments correct for people who actually need it, how are they going to do it for COVID? Yeah. I think maybe at least employers should have the option to say, like, this person definitely needs to not be here. We also don't want COVID in the office, so we're going to put in this much. The government can put in this much. Like a smaller amount, for sure. But there would be companies that would do it. Yeah, I don't think there would be. Mine, mine definitely would. I mean, but they're just kind of looking at people to sacrifice their own time and money now. Yeah. Which, to be fair, should have been a thing since the flu was around anyway. But yeah, people got to eat, especially with this cost of living crisis coming up. Oh, it's it's going to be heating or eating for a long time to come. Oh, it's a good thing it's yeah. summer. We don't need the heat. Yeah, I need fuel though. Yeah. I'm I'm really starting to get into the mindset of uh, they can't take us all to court. In it, like the fine at this point would be worth it for a full tank. I mean, but the the long term repercussions is that worth it? I mean, electricity is free in prison. Yeah, but Reddit's not unless you have a fine up your ass. Yeah. Oh, there's rarely a moment that I don't. Fucking 160.7 at Asda at the minute. I've seen it at 1.9. Yeah. I filled up uh, on the way home from work today and nearly cried. you got to remember the Asda by you guys, though, is... It used to be cheap, but the cheapest. I think they now realise that they can take the piss. Oh, no, Asda, because I'm on the petrol app. Um, and Asda for me is the cheapest within okay no the cheapest within 20 miles is Morrison's Mm -hmm. Um, but within 5 miles that is the cheapest one for me yeah which going further than 5 miles kind of defeats the point of getting cheap petrol yeah mine unless it's unless it's on route exactly yeah mine by me is 159 I don't even know. I I don't want to know. If I need petrol, I need petrol. I just have to deal with it. Yeah, that's the way I look at it. The cheapest. It is what it is. Or, going back to what we were saying earlier about people being ignorant and in bliss, I just put £30 into my tank, so it doesn't, fuel prices don't matter to me. Yep, I put 35 in and hope for the best. (laughs) No, literally, people people believe that the fuel price changes doesn't affect them because they always put thirty oh. pound in. Well, that, what that doesn't even what? Yes, I've seen so many people say I only ever put ten pounds in, so the fuel prices do not affect me. I do love that. Is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. That, that tenor isn't tenor in like it used to. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake, Katie. That wasn't me. That was me. My phone's on silent. It was me sending the message. <laughs> it was Aaron that didn't put his phone on silent. Shut up, baby. I know it. That's the cheapest near you. Hey, Costco. Hey, Costco Stevens. How is Costco not the cheapest, though? That's mind blowing. Yeah. And uh, I apologise for my absence earlier. I was uh, I was fully ready to go until my laptop decided to shit itself, and I I also had a nap. I was going to say that phone call that I made you tell a different story yeah, there. I had a migraine, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Is there, do you know when the girl gets splashed with water and she wakes up? Hello, hello. <laughs> hello. Yeah, but five phone calls though was was a little bit unnecessary. Not you really. kept declining them, and it was forty minutes after we were supposed eh. to start. Eh, eh, yourself. <laughs> ben cancelled what half an hour before we were supposed to do it yesterday. You were eating a roast dinner. I was portable. I bought my laptop ready to go. No, you fucking didn't. I was... 
What about, what about the weekend before that? Oh, I was completely not. Well, oh, uh, hang on a second. Why oh, are you, the you forgot for that? No, no, no. The difference between me and you in this instance was you forgot and were not willing to do it. I forgot and was willing to send my companion home. <laughs> Look, it doesn't matter. We're not. We're not. We're not gonna. If, we're not gonna pick fights about it. It does. We're roasting Aaron. Eh? I want to pick a fight. Fight me. I'd lose so easily. You both got fragile headaches. I just had to poke you hard in the temple, each of you, and you'd be on well, your asses. Please poke me hard next time with something sharp. At this point, I'm used to the pain. Like anything you do to me, would probably just distract me from my actual pain. It'd be Kinky. a blessing. Hey. Okay, so, fuel seems to have gone down. Is it just me? Because I've been seeing like one pound seventy two everywhere, and now I can't find anything over one sixty. There, there is meant to be. Look on the motorways. I am the the, the um, service station near us, which was one seventy three, I think. And now it's I, fine. I have definitely seen one ninety on the motorway. Oh a yeah. Of days ago. Uh, Nearest service station northbound from you? Yeah. 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 But they're always just Good um, Lord. arseholes and just jack the price up by at least 10, 10 to 15 p. That's the way it always is on motorway service stations. So. Oh, yeah, I know. I know that. So. Do you want to do shower thoughts? Because we're almost at an hour. Oh, Jesus. Ooh. What have we been talking about? Talking about all sorts of bollocks. I mean, one of my favourite, not my favourite shout, I thought, but one that I looked at and I was like, oh, yeah. Like, if they got rid of the number seven on a microwave screen, no one would really notice. See, I don't have a digital pad. I just have a wheel. I hate the wheel. I was having this conversation literally yesterday. Like, how can you get an accurate amount of time with the wheel? It's, it's got a digital clock on it. Yeah, but some don't. Some just have yeah. the, like Aaron. It's not. A, it's not an old school one. It's a, it's a new one, but it's got a wheel instead of a button. Aaron's just has the notches on the wheel, and they don't have numbers on them. They're just notches. What? No, just chaos. Microwave. I can I can barely hear Katie. It, it sounds like as if she's slowly getting quieter. And quieter. Your microwave. It doesn't have numbers. Oh, it yeah, just has a wheel. wheel. Yeah, it has one wheel and one door. <laughs> that's, not, that's not what we're referring yeah, to well, anymore. You know, just to give you an update on that microwave. Oh, but yeah, you could take the number seven off all the microwave keypads, and like no one would notice or just wouldn't care. No, because I like I like micro. When I used to live at home with my parents, I'd like to microwave things to random numbers. Just Why? so I can make sure that my perception of time is kept in check. When you're done with the microwave and you've like opened it before the timer's up, do you cancel it off? Uh, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Good. I, can't I always let it run out. People. Yeah, I can't stand people leaving like 12 seconds on the microwave. See, mine just clears itself after a while. See, my, mine doesn't. And I like to be able to, when you press the start button on mine, it just automatically does it for 30 seconds. I don't so want you, to do, Aaron, do you, do you also have to have the volume on the oh, round yeah, number yeah. or a multiple? It has to be an even number of multiple or five. A multiple, yeah, five or zero. Mm. Oh, and the subtitles have to be on, even if I'm not like, even if it's saying I already know the words to or seen. If the subtitles are on, I can't hear what's going on. It's just you know that video where it's like this is what English sounds to non-native speakers, and it's just basically Simlish. Yeah. That's what TV sounds like to me now without subtitles because I've been using them for too long. And it was Problem years. Is. It was years of watching TV as a kid when I should have already been asleep. So I'd have it yeah. on like volume Same. two with the subtitles. <laughs> Same. The other problem is I, I can read the subtitles faster than, than they can yeah. talk. So yeah, I know what's coming. There's no like cliffhangers or no. Like I'll spoil it for myself. I especially find that with The Walking Dead, I'll absolutely spoil things. But, the, but some of the subtitles have got better where there's like a dot, 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 and then it does it as yeah. it's dropped yeah. vocally. And I appreciate that. 
it's a lot harder watching like foreign films though because they'll be like talking off on a they'll continue talking and then uh you miss all of the the non-verbal stuff like the tone of the voice because you're just not picking up on it Mm. I've got two really good ones. Shower thoughts. Okay. It won't be long before okay. people use the 20s, the 30s, and the 40s to describe the 2020s, the 2030s, and the 2040s. Yeah, I don't like it because I'm going to have to specify the 1920s, and I don't, well, I'll be dead. But yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, but they're going to. It's going to have to be the the 1920s and the 2020s. Wait, why That's do I think I'm going to be dead? It is the 20s. Why do I think I'm going to be dead? You'll be dead when you be... Well, no, you'll be, you'll be an old woman referring back. Back in the 20s, the 2020s. What <laughs> the 1920s. And the other one is... If 24-hour clock started at 23.59 and counted down rather than up, people might try getting more stuff done. I mean, it kind of does. It, it, counts, it counts up to zero, I guess. Yeah, but if you saw the click, the, the, the click, the <laughs> click. If you saw the click cocking down, um, like especially when it got to like one o'clock, and then it just starts counting down the yeah. minutes, you'd be like, "Oh shit, I better get stuff done at midnight." But to be fair, that's when I do most of my like cleaning. I'm like, ah, it's 11 p.m. I shouldn't sleep. I should deep clean my house. I mean, it just sounds like you don't have a very good concept of time. Me? No. Well, anyone, Aaron, Aaron's thought on this or shower thought, or whatever. Seems odd. I mean, if you can't work out how much time you've got left in the day, it just sounds like you can't do maths. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Ooh. Here's a good one. People will swim in the ocean, even though there are definitely many corpses in it. Yeah. People will not swim in a pool with a corpse in it. Humans all have a corpse to water <laughs> ratio that is acceptable for them to swim in. But that's the burden of knowledge, though, isn't it? Like, mm. you see it, therefore it exists. Yeah, it's kind of also like. If I put a little shit ball into a bag of Maltesers, are you, are you going to eat out of that Malteser bag now? If I told you someone had pissed in the bath, would you gargle the water? Oh, yeah, but that's my kink. <laughs> kink shimmy. But then if you said someone pissed in the ocean, you'd probably still get a mouthful of seawater and not stress out about it because, you know, the dilute, mm-hmm. the, they're diluted corpses. Yeah. So how big how big of a swimming pool does it have to be to have a dead body in it if you just swim in it still? Mate, I'd do it in the old school pool. <laughs> I'd... So so that's like half an Olympic pool then? Yeah, yeah not even that. Like I'd corner, do it in that. Um... Like, no, just avoid that corner over there. I'd swim in a three-star hotel pool in Spain. I mean, if they're as long as they're not like decaying actively in front yeah. of it. As long as they did all their, like, on-death excretions before getting into the pool. Like, if someone had chucked a, like, old corpse, not old corpse, like, four hours passed. If someone just yeeted it into the pool, I'd be like, well, they've done all their shit and then pissing outside of the pool. Which would bother me more than the corpse. So now they're just a body that's cold. Mm. I want, like, rigor mortis stage. That's the, that's the level of corpse I'd be happy to swim with. So here's here's another where do you rate human life sort of on a scale compared Not to all. something else? Nearly everyone values a human life over the life of a fish, but few people value a single human life over all of the fish. Meaning everyone has a certain number of fish to humans. Well, like fish are an e- <laughs> a school of fish are like an ecosystem that benefits the planet, though, right? It just sounds like the trolley problem over and over in different words. Yeah. But yeah. Nah, fuck the fish. Oh, fuck it all. Do you reckon, like, Daddy Bezos has. 
That's <laughs> I haven't heard that in so long. That is hilarious. Bye, Aaron. Um, yeah, do you reckon Daddy Bezos has a draw, like a crap draw? Of course he does. We've just like an Allen key in it. <laughs> oh my god! Sorry, I've just seen Aaron's message. So that's what I thought you were laughing at. No. Were you laughing, laughing at Daddy Bezos? I, lo- I was laughing at Daddy Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> FYI, Aaron left a chat because uh, the podcast because his laptop's died. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I reckon Daddy Bezos just has like a draw with Alan Keys and just like a car key from a car he owned like twelve years ago. Yeah, everyone's got a shit draw. Yeah. And but even Daddy Bezos? Then... What's that? Even Daddy Bezos? Of course. I think even Mary Condor or Q D, whatever what's her name? Marie Kondo. That's it. <laughs> 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 Yeah, she even has a shit jaw. No. She's, yeah, of course she does. No, she's she like, doesn't. oh, these Allen keys do not spark joy, but I have <laughs> so much IKEA furniture I need to rebuild. <laughs> no, I need to know now. Let's break into her house. Where'd she live? It's just propaganda bullshit. She she just wants you to buy more shit. She wants you to throw away all your old shit and buy new shit. This is a fun one. Um, OnlyFans is proving that there's a strong correlation between disposable income and foot fetishes. Mm. I mean, I'm fully, I'm fully thinking of starting up my fake knicker wearing business. I'm just going to buy as the knickers and just flog them online and say a woman's worn them. Tuna and brine. <laughs> oh <my laughs> <God>. <laughs> I mean. It's... Do you think that will command more money? Yeah. I think my biggest problem is if they ask for a picture of me wearing them. I don't know how to pull that You off. have to actually put up a picture. You have to put up pictures on the oh, profile. Yeah. Oh, I, think, yeah. I think my hairy legs are going to pull it straight out of the fantasy. So do you think people buying used ladies' underwear are not doing it for the fragrance? Well, yeah, but I wasn't <laughs> expecting I was going to have to do a photo as well. Yeah, you have to, you have to use your, like, like government issued ID to sign up to these pages. What? Well, I'll probably just stop people like me. Yes. <sighs> yeah, you have to verify Fuck. you're a human. Oh, that sucks. I'm speaking 100% from experience because your girl's broke. Oh. I didn't realise the uh, Only Mantises was a real deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, a mutual friend of ours was set in there pissing a jar. Oh. For like seven pound a jar, and I was like, "This is lucrative." I mean, yeah, this is you know, I'm literally flushing money down the toilet every day. That's what I mean. Did you did you hear about the woman who was selling her farts? Yeah, <laughs> that she gave herself like uh, she hospitalised herself because she was trying to force too many of them out. Yeah, that's mental. Prolapse, a prolapse, pro far, prolapsed herself. Oh, God, I keep reading the fucking ads. Oh, yeah, I've done it twice. Mixing milk and water is generally only considered acceptable when another substance like tea is involved. Mm. Now, I mix I mix milk and water all the time, but I drink almond milk, which is 90% water. So if I've just not got enough almond milk left, I'll just put some tap water in and it will just stay milk coloured and I can lie to myself and say it's a full thing of milk. Since, like, Veganuary, we basically have oat milk in the house. Yeah. I mean, my daughter still drinks standard milk, but she's, like, free and probably needs it. Yeah, I haven't drank, like, dairy milk in years at this point. Just because I ended up liking almond milk more. I mean, oat milk's not bad. I quite like it. Yeah, I, I started drinking almond milk for the calorie for calorie reasons, and oat milk is more calorie-dense than whole milk, so... I kind of just like the fact that it doesn't go off very quickly. Oh, yeah. I don't understand why almond milk goes off. It's fucking almonds. Like, Well, everything goes off eventually. But almonds have a really long shelf life. Yeah, almond milk has like oh, three days once opened. But is it actually three days or is it just them covering arse? 
I don't know. This is what I mean. I feel like there's <clears> an almond milk conspiracy theory going on. Like milk for me, like I would still drink milk after it's used by date. If after the smell check, yeah. Here's a good saying: painkillers are the mute notification option for the body. Wait, say that again. Painkillers are the mute notification option for the body. They are. They are. If something else, like, vaguely about that I heard today, which I've always agreed with, is they should just have, like, a separate Olympics for people who want to take steroids. Yeah. Like the superhuman Af- uh, like Olympics. Like, who can get the most roided without, like, shitting themselves? Or even just, like, yeah, just see how see how far she can run if everyone can just take steroids. Yeah. Like, I want to see the pinnacle. People would die. Like people would try well, to die. You know. What's next? This is a fun shower thought. If anyone from the future ever came to warn us of an impending catastrophic event of our own making, we'd just put them in a mental hospital and ignore our saving grace. Yeah. Like, in every movie, they're like, oh my god, you've come to tell me my future? That is not how that would play out. We'd be like, alright, are you, which, which, uh, what, what meds are you on? Have you taken them? I would just be like, where's my lottery ticket, bro? Where are the numbers? And then I'd tell them to fuck off. But you'd be dead by the time they called the draw. You're only alive because you never made the bad decision that would have killed you. Ah. Again, something else I heard recently on this exact matter. Uh, It was, you know, the reason why we have projectable thoughts where we can look at something and suggest options that will happen. There was a very clever person who said, the reason that happens is if you was an animal and you just did that thing and you died, you're dead. Yeah. Very smart. But if you can look at something like a glass of water in a box with a snake and you can say, well, if I put my hand in that box to get the water and the snake bites me, I might die. And that idea of you doing it dies, then you live on. It's one of the reasons why they seem to think that humans have got to apex predator level because we can pre-plan and most animals just do. So that's people driving. Not a lot of people pre-plan when they're uh, cutting me up at roundabout. No. But they're just relying on reaction. Ugh. Huh. The number of doors and wheels in the world are constantly in flux. The answer to the doors versus wheels debate is probably constantly changing. I disagree. This one's fun, though. There is a very high chance that the person with the highest IQ ever and the person with the lowest IQ ever never took the test. I mean, I think the IQ tests that I've done were stupid anyway. I don't agree with IQ. Yeah... It seems, you know, it's the whole, again, another fucking saying is if you judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree, it will think it's stupid for all its life. Yep. I um, was thinking about, I always think about like, oh, what superpower would I want? And I think I genuinely like to be able to do anything like and like chop and change which anything I could do at like a competitive level. You say that again, sorry. Like I'd want to be able to be able to acquire any skill like instantly and like have the ability to change what that skill is and be able to do it at a competitive level. That'd be insane. Imagine if you just like went, mm, I'm I do esports now and just went with <coughs> zero experience fucking killed all the competition and they're like oh so when did you start gaming uh tuesday and then i feel feel like that would become very boring very quickly but yeah could you imagine like the headlines going and doing that and then just going and like winning a triathlon and then 
win- winning the London Marathon. Just like just doing loads of stuff that has no correlation of skill. And just being mm. the person that can never lose at anything. And like the amount of money you'd make. I feel like you'd get locked in a complex to be tested. But you could never fail. That's the, the power. Pro- but the problem is it's like you'd you'd be too smart. No, it'd be, it'd be like talking to idiots all the time. How are you going to have a conversation with someone if you know everything already? Yeah, but imagine, like, technically, with this power, you'd know every language. Yeah. So yeah you every could, language, you you'd know every bit of science. You'd be at the pinnacle of human knowledge. You'd imagine, and you knew everything, all the secrets of the universe, everything, and you knew what these ancient tablets that no one can decipher say you'd know what they say and no one would believe you exactly everyone would just be like you because you wouldn't be able shit. to show you're working out because you've just like magicked up the ability to do it yeah. oh it's kind of the same thing with like being immortal isn't it like it'd yeah. get very very boring very quickly yeah eventually it'd get very hot very quickly as well <laughs> <laughs> unless we got to another planet yeah technically if you're going to live forever you could just kind of like push off and just yeah. constantly suffocate in space. Yeah. <clears throat> here's, here's a perfect saying which scares the shit out of me. Every child is trained by their parents for a world that is one generation out of date. Oh. And this is the reason I don't want kids. And, Joe, the world is so fucked up. I said this to boomers. I said this to two boomers very recently. And I was like, I don't want to have kids because I can't guarantee what the world's going to look like when they're in their prime in 30 years' time. And they were like, I wish more people thought like that. The the world right now is no place to be raising kids. Boomers said that to me. Mm. Normally the boomers are the ones saying, oh, you'll change your mind. Wait until you get in your 30s, you'll get broody. No, because the, the boomers are the ones that locked out and dropped in. You know, perfect time to buy a house, perfect time to raise a kid. The higher purchase and disposable income generation, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, just uh, peaced out and died, just as everything went to shit. Honestly, I was having this conversation with my mother, and she was saying, I don't understand why people don't buy houses. It's a better investment than renting. I'm like cracking my knuckles just getting into it. And I was like, you need to understand that you bought your first house in the 70s and you lived in London before you bought your first house in the 70s. And they didn't want people living in London because the boomers overpopulated London. So they gave everyone 100% mortgages to move out of London. So what you did is you got a £6,000 flat and you had to put no deposit down on it. Mm -hmm. So you got to just instantly rent a very cheap property, which gave you equity, which meant you could buy a £60,000 house 35 years ago that's now worth £400,000 and you've had to do nothing to it for it to build that value. Yep. And all the while, the national living wage has gone up by about £5 an hour. Mm. Like, 60 grand to 400k, like, does not equate to an extra £5 an hour. And like you were two, you were two people in your twenties making what would be regarded as minimum wage, like just normal, normal salaried, raising two kids, and you managed to not only get a mortgage but occasionally go on holiday, on like a government job and a factory job. Just meant that, wouldn't it? It's, it is not the same now. And you did all of that with equity because you got lucky. Yep. And that's not how the world works anymore. I need to have like five times the cost of your first property to even get a look in at getting guaranteed on a, for a mortgage. Oh, yeah. Don't tell me not get that stuff. So I can afford that. Because fuck you. (laughs) My rant is over. Right. And on that lovely note, I think we should call it. Yep. It's a school night. It is a school night. Well, (laughs) goodbye from Aaron.
Yeah. yeah. Came in late and then dipped early. Sounds about right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he, so he can't even say anything. He can't. He's just getting bullied from afar. He's used to it. Yeah. Anyway. Bye. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from me.